is this story of working with unstructured data across an enormous organization and being able to pick bits of data from different teams and bring them together for applications is, is a really, really like incredibly cool emergent thing. And we're seeing it in almost every type of customer. And it's just really rewarding to see how the establishment of a data lake and analytics practice sort of structured data um, allows our customers to move faster like this. The second, and maybe a little bit more specific thing that I just want to call out about the way that I hear Ashwini and some of our other customers talking about this pattern is this term data product, right? And the way that um, this term is used is really to describe the idea that there is a set of data that's got some value to the organization and it takes a bit of work, right? It needs some curation, some cleaning, right? It possibly has a, a catalog integration or even an API specific to the data type and it's gonna be a central value inside the customer's business that other teams will integrate with. And it's a helpful way to think about working with large volumes of data. Now, this idea of large volumes of data is coming up in a lot of our storage conversations recently. The reality is that we frequently hear customers talking about the sheer volume of data that they're working with. They have so much data. And this is virtually never spoken in a negative way. There's just a lot of data. And internally, we know it has so much value. There's so many applications that we can potentially build on top of it, but at the same time, there's so much data. And so a lot of the focus on top of data lakes and large storage collections inside our storage services has really shifted to not just conversations about storage, which we've had for two decades around performance and management and organization and really shifted to finding and building on top of the right data, right? How do I filter for it? How do I curate it? How do I build usable data sets that I can go and then move really fast to build applications on top of? And ultimately, a lot of these conversations come around to building and collecting metadata on the data that we manage. The metadata layer ends up being really important. If I go back to the photography example that I used at the start of the talk, film photography had a real metadata problem. Um, when you did film photography, the camera actually just took the picture, right? And the picture was on the film, and then when you got to do development and printing, you're like, I don't know if any of you had this, it's like, where was this? I don't even remember where this picture was. It's like a really cool picture from my vacation or whatever, but there's no metadata. And so professional photographers and, and folks doing a lot of photography would often keep a journal where they would write down the pictures that they took and they would stick it to the roll of film so that when they developed, they knew what was there. There was a journal of changes. And so this concept is a lot like what we're kind of thinking of. And I'm going to come back to it in a sec. But first, I want to give you a really concrete example of the types of things that people are building using metadata on top of existing storage in S3. Um, one of the most wonderful parts of my role at Amazon is I get to go and, and spend time with our customers and really learn from them. And so earlier this year, I spent this fantastic afternoon at Adobe sitting down with Arash Farzan, uh, who runs the data platform for training generative foundation models at uh, Adobe. And if you haven't seen some of the things that Adobe is doing uh, with generative fill and some of the other Gen AI powered tools, you should go and check out the demos because it's absolutely incredible. Adobe's training pipeline takes advantage of collecting and applying metadata. So Adobe starts with many tens of millions of stock photographs in S3. And what they're ultimately going to do is use those photographs to train a generative image model. And so over on the right, we see a bunch of GPUs that are the training cluster. But it's not enough to just give the GPUs those photos to really teach it about image construction, we have to give it other bits of information to understand the images. And so Adobe has teams that build metadata, not just the image metadata about the, um, the headers of the images and stuff, but also uh, edge detection, depth perception, and even potentially text summaries of the images. And they take all of these things out of the metadata store, and when they go to train, they actually issue a query to it that builds a large canonical table of all of this metadata. And then they slice this table up and they pass it to the GPUs for training. 
Right? So this is like a really interesting example where the images have enormous value, but the metadata is what really makes it magical as they go off to, to train. And this is not only a generative AI pattern. Right? This is something that tons of data lake customers do, whether it's building metadata on top of medical images or large PDF document collections or really any type of data you can imagine in storage. And so while building metadata collections and curating metadata is really, really valuable, it is a bit painful. Right? You have to build effectively a data pipeline to monitor the stored data. You have to choose and design a metadata store to store the data in. Uh, and ultimately, that metadata store is valuable as a point of integration for your organization, but is not generalized with other external tools. And so the last announcement that I would like to talk to you today is a preview of a new feature called S3 Metadata. And S3 Metadata takes advantage of S3 tables, effectively building a system table that you can automatically index and place metadata about your objects into. S3 metadata is a starting point for building rich metadata stores on top of data in S3. S3 metadata is structured at launch very similarly to the journal that I told you the photographer used. It produces a list of information whenever you mutate data in your bucket. So if you create an object, you get a row in a metadata table at that time that has all of the metadata about that object. Deletions are annotated and object metadata changes are annotated as well in there. And so with S3 metadata, you get a, effectively a system table, queryable with SQL tools, because it's an S3 table, that is maintained up to, up to date and provides you a rich set of metadata for your objects. Now, there are a few applications for this immediately. The first one, and this is kind of a boring one, but I think it's awesome as an S3 customer myself, is it's kind of like a really, really souped up list. Right? If you need to go and find a bunch of objects in your bucket, now you can use SQL and you can query on any dimension of object metadata inside the bucket. So it becomes a very powerful way, if you're working with large collections of objects, to go and find exactly the data you need. So from a data discovery perspective, this is immediately a really, really valuable tool. It's a starting point to start building and understanding object lineage. And so if you need to understand um, what's changed in a bucket between a certain point in time, last Wednesday and today, this is a way to issue those queries. And finally, it is a way for you to augment and add your own metadata to data. So anything that's inside user-defined metadata fields or S3 object tags is automatically annotated inside the object metadata table and you can query on that too. You can also, of course, build additional tables in the bucket and do joins across those tables. And so you can build very rich um, indexes of the objects that you have. 